Saturday, it's time to talk technology, and our tech expert, Luis Alvarez, joins us on our Experts program. Luis, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Mark. How are you today? Doing pretty good. I understand you're going to enjoy the Father's Day weekend down in Paso for some wine tasting. Yes, uh, my lovely wife, Ronnie, decided to whisk me away on a Father's Day weekend down in Paso, uh, where we're going to visit a few of our favorite wineries and uh, a couple of the uh, restaurants that uh, we really enjoy when we're down there and uh, enjoy some of the sunny weather that they expect to have. It's going to be in the high 80s, low 90s down there. So it's going to be a a little different than what we usually get up here. Yeah, it's going to be about 30 degrees warmer than Monterey because tomorrow's high here will be 62 or today's high as the case may be. And uh, by the way, speaking of today, the 15th, it is the 17th annual Rock and Rod Festival down in the Custom House Plaza. So I'll be down there in a little bit with the car. And uh, the Monterey Wine Festival is happening this weekend, the conference center, both Saturday and Sunday. So yeah, plenty that's going a lot on. of fun. You've been to both. We've gone to yeah, we've gone to, to both and really enjoyed seeing your car and uh, chatting you up while you were there, and then uh, going over and tasting some of the wines and uh, you know talking to some of the, the winemakers and folks from the winery. So it's a really uh, a really enjoyable experience, even if it's not blazing sun. It's still a, a fun day. Right. Hey, the U.S. Air Force is confirming that it has conducted its first successful AI dogfight. This is going to be our topic for the day, and uh, what it's an autonomously controlled aircraft. So that means it has no pilot. Correct. The X-62A, which is really a modified F-16, is something that the Air Force has been working on for a while because like many industries, the Department of Defense, all of the services are having a recruiting issue and finding enough, not just uh, when you think about recruitment, uh, airmen and soldiers, but fighter pilots, uh, people who want to fly planes. And it's also very expensive. The F-35, which is uh, one of the most modern fighters that we have now is a $35 million investment, not counting the ongoing upkeep of that. So the Air Force is really looking to try to join the automation nation by developing fighters that can fight themselves and they would be augmenting crewed airplanes. So the idea is that you'd have let's say an F-22 or an F-35 type of fighter up there with a human pilot, but then he'd have four or five drones that would be controlled by him, but also be able to act independently to fight the enemy. And this is especially important in Asia Pacific region where China has an overwhelming superiority in the number of aircraft. Their aircraft may not be as good as ours, but they do have um, you know many more of them than we do. So the only way that we'll be able to, to meet their force is to be able to use drones and other autonomous type of technology to, to fight in the skies if should it ever come to that. But we need to first get to the point where these aircraft can truly distinguish themselves as independent capable of doing a, a dogfight, for example. And they announced DARPA, which is the research end of the Department of Defense, announced that uh, they had successfully executed a uh, dogfight where one of the aircraft, this X-62A, was uh, fighting a human-crewed F-16. And interestingly enough, they did not say who won that dogfight. They said that, that that information didn't really matter. It's just the fact that it was able to be done was a, a key uh, highlight of the test. Right. And they said they got as close as 2,000 feet away away from each other, traveling at 1,200 miles per hour. Uh, boy, it doesn't take long to go 2,000 feet when you're moving that yeah. fast, probably like in the blink of an eye. That's the thing where the idea of computers being able to do this is not so far-fetched. I mean, they are faster at being able to process things. They don't have to worry about G-forces like human pilots have to, right? So the, the, the idea that they could do maneuvers that might otherwise be impossible for a human to do, none of that is strange. The issue is, can it be done? And can it be done successfully. So that's what this test was designed to do. And they're going to do, they've been doing these tests for a while. They've done a total of 21 test flights so far, and they're going to continue and refining the process and to the point where they can then take the information that they've gathered and start looking at deploying, developing drones, which are significantly lower cost than, uh, you know, the F-35 or F-22 to augment the existing uh, Air Force that we have. Well, it'll be uh, interesting to watch how this comes along. And I'm sure that it is going to continue to advance what with the way technology is going and the and just the rapid increase in AI controls that we're seeing that at some point uh, you could end up with a, an air force with uh, as many AI fighter planes as you have uh, crewed planes yeah, and even more. The idea that, you know, the Air Force and the Navy are both uh, experimenting with drones in many fashions to augment their human crewed ships and airplanes because they just don't have enough people and um, they need 
need to be able to provide a force to counter some of our enemies. And they're learning lessons from what we've seen in the Ukraine-Russia war and as well as uh, the uh, Israeli-Hamas war. It's like, you know, drones and autonomous devices are really what the future of warfare looks like. Hey, Lewis, before we wrap things up here, I want to mention an interesting op-ed piece that I saw on Friday's Mercury News by Gabe Burke regarding commercial real estate and technology. And uh, he's talking about a reckoning coming for office landlords in a scary market. And what's happening is that office building owners are facing their scariest market in decades because hybrid work and inflation have upended years of expansion. And right Mm -hmm. now, for example, in downtown San Francisco, the office vacancy rate is at 36%. In downtown San Jose, it's 35%. And much of this was spurred on by the pandemic a few years ago and the emergence of the hybrid work model or work from home. And so we've seen companies either abandon offices altogether or downsize them to a much smaller footprints. And where this is going is that landlords, they're facing extremely tough decisions as to how to make their way forward, particularly those who have a lot of debt hanging over them. And they need that monthly lease income to be able to pay down the mortgage and other debt that they have. So what they're talking about is embracing more technology, having to somehow come up with the money to retrofit these spaces to make them more adaptable so that they can be changed as quickly as market needs change, but also have the ability to enable emerging technologies within those office spaces to make them more attractive to the tenants and Mm -hmm. uh, and attract in new tenants. And so it's an interesting but kind of a scary proposal, and particularly for cities and counties that depend so much on the property tax revenue. Yeah, commercial property, yeah. You know, commercial property Uh, tax revenue. It's a big thing. It is. And it's literally, you can buy real estate downtown San Francisco commercial buildings for 30 cents on the dollar if you're interested in being a commercial property landowner, uh, landlord, because so many people are highly leveraged that, you mm-hmm. know, invested a lot of money in, in these properties. And as interest rates now start to increase and they have to refinance some of these properties, they just don't want, you know, they just don't want to or can't. So that's why you're seeing, you're, you're seeing investments in making these commercial spaces more attractive. But also you're seeing a lot of people, especially downtown San Francisco, they're talking about converting some of those commercial spaces to housing. Right. And years past where you had uh, warehouses that have been converted to lofts or apartments, you're going to start seeing some of these commercial spaces being turned into condos and, and apartments. And it'll it'll be an interesting dynamic because that commercial corridor that we've all grown to love in in the, the downtown areas of some of these large cities will now become a lot of housing as well. Right. And speaking of housing, that reminds me that in downtown Salinas, there's a um, six or seven story building, the one that housed Bank. Wasn't that converted into to housing the upper yeah. floors yeah and it's uh, fully leased out the, you know i think there were 48 or 50 apartments uh, mm-hmm. studios and one bedrooms and each one is unique because of the layout of the building they couldn't really do like a cookie cutter where you just could you know start designing from the inside out they had to take the spaces that they had and develop the apartment so it's kind of eclectic if you look at uh, some of the spaces some are really cool but it's people love that i know that uh, live there and these are usually young people that are mm-hmm. working nearby they love being able to walk to the tailor building if they're working at one of the offices over there or take public transportation rather than having to drive everywhere that they go. So all we need is a grocery store downtown and we'd be do- and we'll be done. Hey, where do they park their cars? Because I know they had a small surface lot behind that building. Yeah, that, uh, so that's where they park in that that lot behind the, the building. And during the day, it's used for, uh, you know, the commercial businesses that are on Main Street and uh, in the downtown area. But in the evening, when all those people go home, then uh, those parking spots become uh, the uh, apartment dwellers parking. Well, interesting stuff. That's Luis Alvarez, CEO of the Alvarez Technology Group, joining us here on Power Talk Radio online, alvareztg.com, and their X handle is at alvareztg. And Luis, the toll free number for the I team. Give us a call at 866 78 I team. That's 866 784 8326. And looking ahead to Monday, job recruitment scams are uh, what we're going to be yeah, talking about. Um, they're out there. If you're looking for a job, especially if you're a young person, you'll want to listen in and see how you can protect yourself. All right. Join us then. Starting at 8.30 Monday morning here on Power Talk. Thanks, Lewis. Take care, my friend.